Hello my beautiful friends, it's Huli here again from Made by the Chef and today I have got a wonderful sunny dish for you that you will love. It, I am making French tomato tart known as tart paisan. It is divine. What it's got in there? Well, the ingredient, tomatoes. Look at these beauties. So I went out for my walk this morning Stay at home, one exercise a day, went out for the walk, and then I went and dropped by my local whole food shop. And you probably hear my neighbour banging in the garden. Anyway, so I went to the local whole food shop and they had these amazing tomatoes, locally grown in Kent, and they are divine. And the great thing about this dish is that tomatoes being the key ingredient, you want to use good juicy flavorful tomatoes they really make a difference i'm putting some onions in there and again another great kent produce local onions look at them the big juicy fat spring onions they are gorgeous thyme got a lovely herb you've got to have a bit of herbs in there again these are local thyme but you get thyme everywhere supermarkets have got it they all sell it and of course, we've got some beautiful creme fraiche and mustard. That is key as well, because that's gonna add flavor to this dish as well. Now, the base of the dish is pastry, and that's what we're gonna make today. So we're gonna do a short crust pastry. A short crust pastry is so easy to do, right? All it is, is flour, plain flour, that's what you wanna use, and butter. And it's half fat to flour. That's all you need to remember. That's your ratio. You just need to think, if I'm using 200 grams of flour, I'll need 100 grams of butter. That's it, it's that simple. So here's my butter. I'm gonna, I've chopped it up and I'm just gonna pop it into the flour. Now here's a little trick. If you want, put your butter in the freezer. Let it freeze and then, when you're gonna make pastry, you take it out and you just grate it, grate it in make it a lot easier for you, be a lot quicker. So what I'm gonna do now is, I am gonna rub in the butter. So, remember when you used to make apple crumble at school? Right, well it's that method. Okay, you're using the rubbing in method. You've got your thumbs, you've got your four fingers, and you're just rubbing your thumbs along your four fingers. Right, I have rubbed it in. Now I've got these beautiful fine bread crumbs, yeah? So literally like you were making a crumble. There it is, look at that, lovely. Now, I'm gonna put an egg yolk in there. You do not have to. You can keep it egg free. I like to use an egg yolk. I think it gives a sense of richness to the uh, pastry and just uh, adds a little depth of color as well. So I've got a knife and I'm just gonna mix the yolk into the pastry dough. Now, little friend, chef friend of mine gave me a little trick. So, cream. You can bind it with water, but if you add cream, it gives this extra little bit of creamy shortness to the pastry, which I love. So I'm gonna go in for a little bit of cream. And I'm probably putting in about two tablespoons. Yeah, there it is, there's your dough. So I've got it out on the surface and I've just molded it together. That's really what you're doing. So remember, you're not kneading it, but you're molding it together like that. And look at that. Now you'll know the difference between this and a bread dough is because this one, when you press into it, the indentation should stay, it shouldn't bounce back because it's not bread. This is pastry. You want it to be lovely and crumbly and short when it's baked. Now look, you can skip all that and use ready-made. That's absolutely fine. Now, I'm gonna roll it out. So first, you wanna chill that pastry. You wanna chill it for about half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour, wrapped in cling film in the fridge. My one's already done. So, I've got one that I made, it's already chilled, and I'm gonna roll it out. And let me show you the tart tin. There's my tin, and look, the bottom comes up. That's what you want, you want a tart tin where the bottom comes out. So it's a lot easier when it's baked and cooled down a bit to then 
push it out. All right, you want a circle. You want to start with a circle. It's a round tart tin. You want to start with a nice even circle. So really make sure that you've shaped it into that circle. Got my wonderful rolling pin. Love this rolling pin. And now I'm going to go with one roll. And then I'm just going to start turning it. And what you do, get an old chefy school. Turn it, quarter turn it. So you roll and then you quarter turn it. You roll again and you quarter turn it. If you keep doing that, you'll get a circle. You don't want anything that's too thick. You might be looking for something about the thickness of a pound coin. That's generally what you want to aim for. Maybe just slightly thicker, but yeah. Look for that, around thickness of a pound coin. I'm going to keep rolling it out. Now, how you, do you know if you've rolled it out big enough? Well, you want to get your tart tin. It's as simple as that. I might need to roll it a little bit more, but I'm going to show you. Get your tart tin, and what you do is you pop the tart tin on the top. And if there's enough space around the outside to cover the thickness, the deepness of the tart tin and go above it, then you know you're all right. Now, use the rolling pin. You want to pick it up with the rolling pin. Okay, so you roll it over the rolling pin. Look at that. How easy was that? You then get your tin, and you measure it, and just touch the surface with one part of the pastry. Make sure it's even as best as you can. And then you're going to gently drop it into the tin, just like that. So you just pick the pastry up and then you use the side of your finger, your index finger, to gently tease it into the tin. And there we go. So now, all this little extra stuff, I'm just going to use my rolling pin and I'm going to use it to cut those bits off. So like I said, you can leave the overhang and I know some chefs like to do that. Me. I like to take mine off because I want a really nice finish on mine. There we go. There you go. You can use that again. Stick it in the freezer, form it back into a ball, put it in the freezer. And there you go. You've got a bit of pastry. Or make it into biscuits. My kids love that. Biscuits, bit of cheese sprinkled on top, bung it in the oven. Fantastic. Now, now that you've cut it, can you see that it's still smooth around the inside? What you're then going to do is you're going to use your thumb or you can use your finger. And what you're going to do is you're going to push the pastry into those wonderful ridges in the tin. So you're going to push them in. And when you do that, that's when you get to see that lovely pattern that you see when you buy a quiche. It is looking so pretty already. Look at that. I've pushed it all around. Look at those ridges. It's absolutely gorgeous. And if you look, can you see the pastry has gone up above the rim of the tin? That's what you want because that is going to allow us for a little bit of shrinkage. Now, this is going to go into the fridge. I'm going to prick the base. I'm going to use a fork to stick little holes in it, not right the way to the bottom, just stick little holes on the top. I'm going to put it in the fridge and I'm going to chill it for about 15, 20 minutes while I prepare my other ingredients. Right, so I have got my tomatoes here now and I'm just gonna prepare them quickly. You could use cherry or plum tomatoes and it, that's absolutely fine. And all you have to do is just cut them in half. I'm gonna use the juicy big ones and, uh, and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slice them. Now, if you wanted, you can peel them. You know, you can do the whole de-seeding, coring, peeling, whatever it is. To be honest, I'm just going to slice mine as they are and they're going to get arranged in the tin. Now the same with the onions, again, all you're going to do is, and you can use any old onion for this, I just happen to have the spring onions, I love them, they're beautiful, and again, you're just going to thinly slice. So I prepared the tomatoes, put them in a bowl, now what I like to do is add a little bit of pureed garlic in there as well, you don't have to, it's not essential. I've actually got some in a jar, so I just dolloped a couple of teaspoons in there. That's it. Now, of course, you've got to have a bit of olive oil, 
So I'm gonna just drizzle over probably a good generous tablespoon of olive oil. I'm gonna put in there salt, then you wanna salt it up as well. And then you're gonna do some black pepper. Loads of lovely black pepper. And then finally what goes in there is gonna be the thyme. So you just want to use a nice bit of fresh thyme, but you can use dried as well. Great thing about thyme, it's one of those herbs that dries so beautifully and you still get a good flavour out of it. So just pull it off, pull off the leaves and don't worry, get a few stalks in there. This is so fresh, the stalks are still really, really soft. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get in there and you're going to mix it all up just to coat those tomatoes. Now I'm going to assemble the tart and look at that. What a beauty. It's chilled fantastically. And the reason we chill it as well because it avoids too much shrinkage. That's what you want to do. Now make sure that your oven's on now at about 180 degrees, gas mark 5, and you're ready to go. So I've got my cream and my mustard here that are mixed together. Now, you know, I use creme fraiche. You can use, uh, actually, you could use yogurt. You can use double cream. Really, it's up to you. And you can use half fat creme fraiche. It still works just as well. Now, I'm just dolloping it in and I'm using the back of a spoon to spread it around. And there you go. So you've got your base. Now we're going to put the onions in there. You're going to get your onions and you just want to arrange them all around the base that's gone in. And now all you have to do is arrange your tomatoes. Try and make it look a bit pretty. So you want to kind of like fan them around the tart itself. So overlapping, laying them up on the side, overlapping them as you go, packing them in. This is why you need quite a few tomatoes. So a good 10 to 12, like I said, is going to work wonders. Let me show you what that looks like. And that's really the aim of the game. That's what you're going for, okay? You want to keep doing that until all the tomatoes are in the tin. Now listen, it might take you a few minutes to arrange the tomatoes, but it's so worth it. Look at how beautiful that looks. This is going to be the most divine French tomato tart it just reminds me of summery days in the provence all those holidays i've had in sunny provence which i love so much absolutely divine now that is going to go in the oven and we're going to let that bake for about 45 minutes i had a little bit of juice left in the bottom of my bowl look at that from the tomatoes i got a bit of crusty baguette but you know what couldn't help myself to dip it in, in that lovely olive oil with the thyme and the tomatoes and mm, I really am digging while my tart cooks. So here it is, my beautiful friends, the tart is cooked and it looks spectacular. It smells amazing. There you go, take a look. That is absolutely gorgeous. Look at that crust. That's what you want, nice golden crust. Want the tomatoes to have shrunk and cooked down, and it is gonna be amazing. It's gonna taste amazing. Let it cool down for a little bit, maybe about half an hour. And this is brilliant as a picnic food as well. Now, have a picnic at home. We're staying home. You're gonna stay home with me, showing you how to make the tart. Create your picnic at home. Lay out a blanket on the floor, put what on, on it, whatever you've got knocking about in the cupboards. Get your tart, and that is just amazing. That's the joy of cooking, the joy of food. It feeds your mind, your body, your heart, your spirit, and it is so wonderful. So, try something new, stay home with me, have a wicked day, and I'll see you again soon.